thank you all for coming to today's event. I'm Stephanie, and you just heard my sister Mariana, and I hope you weren't scared away from this tiny little creepy centipede. Anyway, uh, I'm sure you're all much more alert now and ready to explore the world of major evolutionary transitions with me. So, all that matters in evolution is gene copies. So we have an individual here and it's just making an infinite number of gene copies. That's all that matters to that individual. Individuals are basically gene replicating machines. Okay, so... Just to make sure you don't forget that, I've highlighted this in bright red, so all that an individual thinks is gene copies. So we have this individual that's selfishly reprodu reproducing all the time. But what will happen if that individual meets another individual? Will it sacrifice any of its energy or resources to help that individual? So should it help it make copies? Now, this is a key question in social evolution. Is he going to help the other individual? Well, it's all down to gene copies again. If these two individuals, the white and the black individual, share uh, similar association genes, then you can see that it's highly advantageous for the white individual to help the black one because in that way it has many copies uh, of its own into the next generation. Another situation in which it is evolutionarily advantageous for the white individual to help the black one is when it receives essential goods in return, such as nutrients, food, and even protection against predators. So um, this is evolutionarily advantageous because by using this extra amount of resources, it can essentially make lots of copies of its own. So, it's happy because it's making lots of copies. Okay. Now, in cases where we have very high degrees of relatedness, so this up here, which essentially means that the white individual and the black are almost genetically identical. They're like clone mates. In those uh, circumstances of very high relatedness, we get very high levels of cooperation. They help each other extremely. Also, when there's an extremely high exchange of nutrients, we also see a very high degree of cooperation. This means that this individual helps the black one so much that he even sacrifices everything, everything that he has, all its resources, even its life sometimes, and even its ability to reproduce independently. And this is the key in major evolutionary transitions in individuality. Now, what a major evolutionary transition is, is that we go from um, one level, so we have this gene with this individual here that was replicating initially on its own, so that's one level, and it made a transition to a whole new level where we have this, say, huge group that now reprodu produces as a new individual. So that's a major evolutionary transition. Now, just to clarify more what I mean by a major evolutionary transition, I'll show you some examples. So we have our lovely little centipede here, which we can think of as a multicellular being, which in fact it is, as well as ourselves. And as you can see, it constitutes of millions of cells, and the majority are somatic, which means that they sacrifice all the resources for these guys in the middle. These cells are the germ cells, and you can picture this in the same framework that I mentioned earlier. So the evolution to multicellularity is a major transition. Another major transition is the eukaryotic cell, which you may have heard of 
in your biology classes. So the eukaryotic cell consists of many organelles. One organelle is the mitochondrion. But this mitochondrion was not always in that cell. In the past, it was just a single cell living on its own, freely dividing. And at some point in time, it was engulfed by another cell. So now we have this whole new unit that can only reproduce as a whole. The host, neither the host, neither the mitochondrion can reproduce independently without each other. And since we've gone so far, I might as well tell you that the genome is also a major transition. So in the past, we had, for example, separate genes that re could replicate on their own individually. But at some point in time again, they joined up in the line and we have this whole new genome that can only replicate as a whole. Another major transition is eusociality. So we have these honeybees here, and we can see two sterile workers, worker bees, and in, if you imagine again the framework here, it's these guys. So they have sacrificed their ability to reproduce, they're sterile, and they give all the resources to this black queen. Only the queen can now reproduce. So we can think of this colony as an individual in its own, just a whole new individual. Another major transition, which is the final transition I'll talk about today, is two different species. Now we have this black aphid, and inside it we have these symbiotic bacteria, which are called Buchnera. Now these bacteria cannot replicate outside the host. They're totally independent, uh, dependent on the host. And this happens as well with the aphid. The aphid cannot reproduce without the bacteria. So we have this whole new individual. Now, we, we are going to continue with some more music and documentaries. And I just want you to try and remember all the social evolution perspectives and major evolutionary transitions I talked about, and you might realize that all these creatures are really fascinating and not that scary after all. Thank you.
interspe interspecies mutualism between the aphid and Buchnera, and we are going to play Astor Piazzolla's Liber Tango, the tango of love. <laughs> 